It is a simple law of nature that all activity, all work requires a source of energy. And since the Industrial Revolution, mainly that source of energy has been carbon rich. However, we are living in transitional times where we're moving away from carbon into other sources of energy. A big player in that will be hydrogen. And with me today is Václav Bistriansky, who is working at UNICRE, which is the educational and research and development uh, part of the Unipetrol group. And Václav is specialising in hydrogen. So he's with me to, here to talk about hydrogen. Welcome to Let's Talk About It, Václav. Thank you for coming. Now, when we hear about hydrogen, it's often in the context of the future. So my first question is why that is? Why do we not have hydrogen with us today and now? Um, Actually, I'm glad you asked, but the, the thing that most people know is uh, that hydrogen has been with us uh, for more than a century now. Uh, but I think why it's al always mentioned as the fuel of the future is because of our intensity or momentum to the seeking for a carbon-free or carbon-neutral future and carbon-free fuel. So, and hydrogen has the capability of uh, play a big role on the decarbonization of uh, industry and the applications in our cars. So I think that the uh, intensity uh, to the fuel of the fu future is that's uh, what makes hydrogen special and uh, viable or visible in the general public. Okay, so the, the driving force behind uh, hydrogen as a fuel is, as you mentioned, this, this drive to, to de decarbonization of our economy, the, uh, the reasons behind which we, we, we've covered on, on many occasions. So is, is hydrogen mainly going to replace carbon-based fuels in mobility? Is it going to be mainly about little cars? Uh, not at all, actually. The application of the hydrogen, or let's say the low emission hydrogen, or the, the future hydrogen, it's not only uh, fuel cell vehicle cars or the hydrogen cars. Actually, it's just one of the third of or one of the three possible ways where we can use the hydrogen. Uh, of course, it could be decarbonizing the transport or low emission transport, but the hydrogen will play a crucial role in decarbonizing the energy sector, whether it's the uh, as the low emission fuel or uh, self-sufficient energy carrier for the households, for example but mainly uh, it could also help us to decarbonize the heavy industry which we have now, namely speaking, uh, metallurgy or uh, refinery and, and, the, and the petrochemical industry. I see, so, so for you there's a future for hydrogen not just in mobility. I, I, was, I was automatically, I think, for some reason, you know, thinking that it's going to be concentrated on our vehicles. But also there's other aspects to that hydrogen economy you can see. So it's a very general platform that hydrogen can decarbonize not just mobility but throughout our economy. Well, can we can we focus a bit on these three identified? But if you could, could you maybe extrapolate a little bit? How can we use hydrogen to power? We start with mobility. How do we use hydrogen to power our cars? And what are the challenges that we face to to go through that transition? Definitely. Well, the as I said at the very beginning, hydrogen is here and is widely used in the industry for more than a century. And it's already used in, for example, in the mobility. Uh, the main use, for example, of, or one of the main use of the hydrogen is during the production of conventional fossil fuels, whether it's the benzene or gasoline, or whether it's a diesel. Uh, we use hydrogen in that sector for, let's say, upgrading the fuel to get the end user quality. Uh, if we produce renewable hydrogen, we can use the hydrogen for such a use and decarbonize the whole process. 
whether it's the uh, in terms of uh, energy sector, uh, the when we burn hydrogen, uh, the hydrogen uh, reaction or the, the, the burning of hydrogen doesn't produce CO2. So we can use the hydrogen to burn it already in the steam burners or to mix it with the gas already and lower our emissions uh, at the energy sector. Or we can use the hydrogen to, uh, uh, let's say, energy carrier that could be used in the fuel cells, uh, which are electrochemical devices that from the hydrogen and oxygen from the air produce pure electricity with no emission. And of course, then, then there's a, a third sector when, since we already know that, that the hydrogen is used in the industry, uh, we can substitute the feedstock that is used now uh, for the feedstock with low or zero emission uh, footprint, which is the hydrogen or the renewable hydrogen. I see. So you're saying that hydrogen will play a big role in our production of electricity. In, so is this so it's going to you see it as a, as a as a part of the mix if it's going to, if we go through to let's say mixing with other um, renewable sources of, of electricity which of course are a bit unpredictable in terms of when the wind's mm. blowing we can get sort of wind energy when the sun's shining but then so hydrogen could be something which could uh, link these uh, s sustainable sources of electricity uh, by being a constant uh, source for for, for, for for onto the electrical uh, grid it, it could be one of the cases where, where the hydrogen will play a role. Uh, if we increase the amount of, of uh, renewables that we have today, we can at some points use the hydrogen as the grid balancing service that we can store the renewable electricity into the hydrogen. Uh, but I think that that's not, that's not the, uh, let's say, uh, the main uh, the main reason why, we, why would we want to keep uh, the hydrogen alive. Uh, I think uh, the huge potential of the hydrogen, of the renewable hydrogen, let's say the, the hydrogen with no emission, is the variety of use within the industry or within the, within the energy sector. Okay, okay. Now, I want to take a step back and look at some of the, uh, the, 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 sort of the fundamentals of hydrogen. <laughs> And uh, as a as a fuel, I mean, it can be argued that hydrogen cannot be classified really as a fuel, simply because there's no natural s resources of hydrogen, so to speak. We have to generate the hydrogen. So I was interested in your point of view on that. C can we really classify hydrogen as a fuel, or is it just a carrier of energy? Uh, both ways or both interpretations are correct, but uh, I like your point that hydrogen technically is not a fuel because it's not simply existing in the natural form. So you have to always generate the hydrogen. But as I said, if, you, if we burn hydrogen, for example, in the gas turbines, then of course it's a fuel because we use the heat generated uh, yes, from absolutely. burning the, the hydrogen and there is no CO2. But uh, more interesting applications are exactly, as you said, as the energy carrier or as the, let's say, feedstock point of view. Uh, because we use the hydrogen for the chemical reactions, but we also we can store, let's say, the electron or the energy store in hydrogen atoms and then use the electron stored uh, somewhere else in the fuel cells. Okay. Now, you mentioned uh, that uh, at Unicre and the Unipetrol Group already uh, produce as a byproduct of their current uh, uh, activities as a, a lot of hydrogen gas. Um, but if we're looking to uh, go forward to a, a larger rollout and application of, of hydrogen as a, as a fuel source, then we're going to have to increase the capacity of production. And so I'm interested to, um, to, ask, to ask you about what you know, what you understand about what the future sources of hydrogen will be for us. And linked to that, we often hear the terms grey, green and blue hydrogen. Could you, tell, could you tell us a bit about what that actually means and how you see that progressing into the future, how you see our um, diversity of hydrogen sources you know, playing out? Sure. Uh, all uh, all of the colors, well, fr uh, first of all, the hydrogen is colorless and odorless gas. So 
uh, whether it's a gray, green, or blue hydrogen, it's still, from the chemical point of view, it's still the same molecule. But the colors actually refer to the, let's say, source of the hydrogen or the production, how, the, how, how it was achieved to produce the hydrogen. Uh, the gray refers to the, let's say, standard way, uh, which is either from uh, natural gas or from uh, residues of uh, heavy oil fractions. Uh, basically, that's uh, basically what I mean by this is that gray hydrogen had some uh, some emission factor or some emission footprint. The green hydrogen uh, it's widely known now because it's let's say zero emission hydrogen, uh, and this this is where we speak about the hydrogen produced by electrolysis, uh, preferably powered by renewables. Uh, with that taking account, we need to uh, we need to take into account that that for every production of green hydrogen, you need to start with the energy source. That's the renewables. You cannot simply use the renewables which you have now because you are actually stealing the let's say uh, the renewable electricity from the mix already. You have to you have to consider building or increasing the capacity of the renewables if you want to produce green hydrogen. And lastly, the blue hydrogen is general, uh, or generally speaking, uh, byproduct or waste hydrogen that is produced with the, let's say, during the different process, for example, from uh, chlor alkali electrolysis, where the main goal or the main product is the chlorine and the and dye, and the byproduct is is hydrogen, for example. So this is, for example, uh, or this is a good example of blue hydrogen. I see. So there, there's several industrial processes which are occurring now, such as the isolation of salts or, or sodium hydroxide, where, uh, where you're going to look to close a loop to form a sort of circularity there exactly. and take that, exactly. that waste yeah. hydrogen and then put it to, to good use. But in, let's, talk, let's, talk, uh, let's talk in terms of figures and some numbers, if, you, if you're able to do so, about capacity in the future. You know, what, are the, what, what is likely to be the main sources at Unicre? What are you working on there in terms of in terms of you know looking to to really produce larger capacity? Uh, well, if you go uh, to the very beginning of the value chain, you there are only two possible ways uh, how to source the hydrogen. Either it's the either it's the renewable electricity, or either it's the uh, biomass. And by biomass, I mean not only the biogas. But for example, uh, communal waste or or uh, plastic waste, uh, because with uh, increasing uh, emphasis on circular economy uh, during the uh, let's say reprocessing of these waste uh, materials, we can also have some source of the hydrogen. Uh, the problem of the the hydrogen from the waste materials is well, you need. Uh, Purity. You need to clean the hydrogen, but it's basically closing the loop and and uh, and let's say uh, using the hydrogen or finding responsible sources of the hydrogen and sustainable sources of the hydrogen. Okay, uh, tell me a bit about the coordination uh, necessary between regions of the Czech Republic and then eventually perhaps even international cooperation to to work with this you know hydrogen economy so if we if we look into the future where um, large uh, large sectors of the economy is decarbonized goes towards hydrogen how will this play out in terms of the uh, the uh, production and the, the the selling and buying of hydrogen gas internationally and nationally well, uh, we in Czech Republic has a little uh, disadvantage here that we don't own sea. We don't have any sea. Uh, and by speaking, uh, the reason why I'm speaking about it is a uh, lot of lot of European states, for example, are focused on building the source of the renewable electricity offshore, which produce a sufficiently amount of electricity that can be then transformed on the land or on land into the hydrogen. Uh, if we talk about the trans uh, transport of the hydrogen uh, from country by country, it's 
very difficult if we if we decide to transport uh, the hydrogen on the road because it will very negatively influence the let's say the economic or the the business model of the hydrogen itself uh, so uh, we in Czech Republic needs to focus on on increasing the amount of the renewables or uh, using the let's say excess electricity from nuclear and uh, generate low emission low emission hydrogen but since we are talking about very new topic or new market or new uh, development area this is still in the terms of legislation and uh, I hope that that the legislation will will, uh, will end up in uh, broadening the ways how you can produce low emission hydrogen as much as possible okay. but uh, you are working at Unicra which is, as I said at the beginning, is the research and development and educational right. wing of the Unipetrol Group. Tell me, and of course you're focusing on hydrogen, so tell me how uh, could hydrogen help to decarbonize the Unipetrol Group per se? Uh, well, the Unipetrol, uh, Unipetrol Group is already uh, the biggest producer of the hydrogen in the Czech Republic. Uh, and nonetheless, it's also the biggest consumer of the hydrogen itself. So most of the uh, most of the hydrogen that produce that is produced in Unipetrol is used in Unipetrol. Okay, on, t- tell us on what? Yeah, and it is used either uh, in the refinery processes for upgrading the fuels, as we said, or for making the petrochemicals. Uh, but we need to understand that all the hydrogen produced from the oil has the certain CO2 footprint. If we increase our capacity, or if we uh, if we enable us to produce uh, hydrogen with no 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 emission factor, we can decarbonize all the sectors or all the processes that are held in the refinery, and this is actually uh, quite popular trend in the heavy industry and in Europe uh, as well. I see. So you're trying to you're saying that at the moment much of this hydrogen being produced is the grey hydrogen exactly and you're looking to replace that gray hydrogen with green or blue hydrogen differently sourced and to and that to be used in the used in the, the various processes, the that, processes that we that, that we have right now okay either for production of conventional fuels or either for production of the of the plastic it will be still the same product that that uh, we or or uh, the general public knows it will be still the same fuel still the same plastic but the overall emission uh, factor of that particular product will be lower. So the thanks ke- to the hydrogen. So the chemistry remains the same. What's different is the, how we source the, 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 the various chemicals to make it more of a sort of a circular sourcing and more of a and m- more sustainable way. Yeah. But if I'm not mistaken, still hydrogen is produced as a byproduct for 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 the many other processes there, right? So what what do we so that there's going to be a, an increase in the capacity in, in the capacity of hydrogen production. Which could then be, which could then go into the, you know, out into the into the into the wider economy, or uh, is that the plan? Or well, uh, with so for example, what I'm saying is, I can see that how hydrogen can be used, especially the blue and green source hydrogen, could be used to decarbonize processes which are happening in the petrochemical right. industry. But will the petrochemical industry also become a supplier of hydrogen to the the, the wider economy? Yes, yes, I, I, I believe that I believe that this is exactly the case because uh, now we need to understand that the hydrogen is already widely used and uh, simply by focusing only on decarbonizing the transport, we it will be very difficult to fulfill all the needs of the hydrogen that we have now because uh, we need to we need to understand that that's. Uh, there's a huge amount of capacity of renewables that we need to incorporate in producing the renewable hydrogen. Then, when we have the, then when we can use the hydrogen to decarbonize the, the, uh, for example, the refinery, we can maybe use the the hydrogen produced now in the refinery for increasing uh, hydrogen mobility in the future. Okay. Which will which will still provide us the the um, low or zero emission, uh, zero emission cars in in our cities. Okay. Perhaps. I would also be interested to, to ask, uh, from your, your specific, very specific um, point of view, how, uh, the, the overlay, how you see the, the whole thing panning out into the right. future, and indeed you are active in, in informing our strategy going into the future, what for you, Václav, are the main 
um, barriers that we have to, to get over? What, what are, the, what are, the, what are the, the challenges that we're facing currently that we need to overcome in order to really roll out this hydrogen system? Uh, I believe that the, the, one of the most and crucial uh, important strategy is to take it let's let's not rush the the hydrogen hydrogen rollout and let's not focus only on green hydrogen and, and green hydrogen in the cars because the potential is huge and the the crucial will be uh, focusing on a sufficient energy source uh, sufficient uh, increasing cap increased capacity in renewables and also uh, to understand the the way when the hydrogen mobility comes uh, we need to understand how to transport the hydrogen in very large amounts and how to store the hydrogen very, in very large amounts and uh, of course how to, how to purify the hydrogen so purification storage and transport so we can get our cars to these uh, the stations exactly. and, and link up Václav Vistriansky, uh, thank you very much for coming to Let's Talk About It and telling us about hydrogen. I have a, a small, as Christmas is, is far apart, I have a small gift for you uh, on behalf of the team. Thank you very much and good luck with all your work.